Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Quick Takes with the Diverse Learners Cooperative. Today, we're talking about three quick tips that we can use to support our long-term multilingual students. If you're unfamiliar with us at the DLC, our mission is an organization is to equip and empower teachers and leaders to serve all students. Today's goals are these. By the end of this video, our hope is that you understand more about students who are long-term multilingual students and that we can look at three ways to best support these students. First, we need to know who we're talking about. So who is a long-term EL or multilingual student? What classifies a student in this category? To be a long-term multilingual student, the student has to have a score on the access test that's less than a 4.4 composite. There's a few other category requirements, but that's the main one. The student also has to have been receiving services for English learners for at least six years. The student's also gonna have varying degrees of schooling experiences. They might have entered the school in kindergarten, they might have entered in elementary school, but they have been receiving services continuously for at least six years to be considered long-term. In order to help us quantify what we're looking at, we're gonna talk about a specific student. This is Luis. He is a long-term EL student at your school. We're gonna use his experiences to guide our thinking. So we'll talk about our tips and then maybe what we would do with Luis. We also need to know how students get services. So they are required to get 60 minutes of daily EL service five days a week. This can take place lots of different ways. Might be in a sheltered EL classroom, but more commonly for long-term EL students, they're gonna be in a co-taught or a push-in or a pull-out setting. And sometimes this is gonna be provided during RTI. For our friend Luis, he is in eighth grade and he receives his required daily services through a co-taught ELA setting. This is very common right now for our EL students that are in middle and high school that have been in the system for a while. So let's talk about some of our tips. Our first tip is to choose a domain. We're gonna look at student access scores over the last several years and determine an area of focus around one language domain in all subject areas. So if we look at Luis's scores from the previous two years, he didn't make the yearly target growth and he stayed the same in, most of the, in a lot of the categories. So what this tells us is that not only did he not meet the growth standard, but we also had his speaking score stay the same from year to year. He did have a lot of growth in listening. He had a 0.5 growth, so he went from a 2.8 to a 3.3. And his reading growth shows some good progress towards exiting. So those are some of the things that we can notice when we look at two years of scores for our friend Luis. He was a 3.6 in 2019 and a 3.9 in 2020. So when we're thinking about how to support him, it can get really overwhelming to think about how we can fill all these gaps. So he's got quite a few scores that we could really work on in order to help ourselves and to help Luis really focus on language acquisition and language growth. We're going to choose one domain. We're going to choose either reading, writing, speaking, or listening based on these scores and have a laser focus on that to help him grow. We're going to make this so important to him and to ourselves, we're gonna set a realistic but aggressive growth goal. So we're gonna look at what the growth standard says is appropriate for him in that category. And we're gonna say, this is our domain. We're gonna grow here. This is our goal by the end of the year. We're gonna communicate this goal to all the teachers that serve this student. A lot of times, gen ed teachers or other teachers that work with our long-term EL students are a little bit unsure about the best way to serve them. So choosing one domain, telling them we're really focusing on speaking with this student. So we need to give them as many opportunities to do it. This is our goal. That's really gonna help those teachers know how to support this student. We wanna make sure that everybody involved knows the can-dos for this student at their current level and at the goal level. 
will create action steps from those can do's to drive the goal forward. And then we'll work with all his teachers to make sure that the content is accessible to him. We're gonna embed classroom activities that highlight his domain of choice and keep his track of the student progress over time. Our second tip is to involve the student. So not only do we wanna choose a language domain to really focus on, but then we're gonna start involving the student. So long-term multilingual learners are old enough to set goals and be involved in the learning process. So we're gonna use this to our advantage. When we're involving our student, once we've set the domain goal, we're gonna consult with that student. So I'm gonna bring Luis into this process continuously over the course of the year. He's in eighth grade and he knows that he still gets services. So he's gonna be motivated by this conversation and by these progress checkpoints once we have something that's reasonable. We're gonna review their ILP with them and introduce one to two trackable goals. Then we'll discuss action steps that we can make with the student towards the goal and set up a regular check-in point for the student and ourselves to discuss progress. So if we're thinking about Luis and what we would do with him, Last year, he showed no growth in the area of speaking on the access test. So for me personally, what I would do is choose that as our domain. And our goal then, once I connect with Luis about it, would be to practice more academic speaking and raise his speaking score above a 4.0. So this might involve things for him like a self-monitored tracker. He could check every time that he participates in an academic discussion in the classroom. It might be a specific academic conversation group that he could use for safe practice. Maybe he just needs more time to do those conversations. Or we could have some really clear rubrics with him for speaking activities. So there's a lot of ways that we can involve him in the process as we've chosen this language goal for him. And our third tip comes from Larry Ferlazzo, and that is to change the paradigm. So we wanna help these students understand the immense value in being multilingual. One of the advantages of having these students be older is that they can understand a little bit more about the value of knowing multiple languages. We're gonna focus on these benefits as a school and with individuals. So Larry Ferlazzo says in the helpful article that's linked here, now we need to change the paradigm. So as teachers start to recognize that the English language learners in our class that enjoy benefits from being bilingual, we wanna help all the students in our class, not just our EL students, appreciate the great skill set of speaking two or more languages. During parent conferences, emphasize to the family that you value their home language and think their students at an advantage to knowing multiple languages. Here's two resources, you can click on these that you can use with students to help support their multilingualism. The one on the left is a great blog post with 10 different advantages that you can present to students. The one on the right is a fantastic poster that shows all the different benefits of being multilingual. So essentially we wanna elevate the advantages, be upfront about the challenges, involve the families, and encourage and allow the use of home language in multiple capacities. So three ways that I would do that to, for Luis to encourage his language goal and growth is to use one of the previous articles to lead an academic discussion around the value and challenges of knowing multiple languages. The second thing I might do is to invite his parents into the school and have him lead a parent student conference in the home language. This is going to show some of a small example of how he could use multilingualism as he goes on in his life. And then when possible, we're gonna allow him to write some of his work in Spanish because that's his home language and use it for discussion with other students. We don't want students to completely lose their native language or their home language. We definitely know that that's an asset to their learning, to their growth. And by providing them opportunities to use it in academic settings, speaks to that in our work with them. So there we have it. In summary, we've got three tips. The first one is to choose a language domain 
as a focal point for the school year and get buy-in from all educators around that goal. Our second tip is on top of that, we wanna involve the student in the goal setting as much as possible. We wanna include them in decision-making around their education. And our third tip is to change the way that students see multilingual education. We want to take an assets-based approach to being multilingual. The title on this slide is linked to several articles and resources. There's a PDF document that you can get that will help you in your journey as you support your long-term multilingual students. So there we have it. Thanks for joining us today. If you have questions, you can always reach me at mary at diverselearnerscoop.com. You can also check out our website. We've got some upcoming intensives in January and February of this school year. And we are looking forward to seeing more of you at upcoming times.